I've been interviewed a lot for mechanical engineering jobs. I've definitely done well over 50 mechanical engineering job interviews, and I'm gonna show you exactly what those interviews are like. It's about 15 minutes before when your interview is supposed to start, and you're a little stressed because after all the rejections you faced, you're hoping that this one is the one. You're hoping that this interview is the one that finally lands you a job offer. Okay, moment of truth, time to join the virtual interview. Hi Tamer, my name is Will with a Y. Sorry for joining a couple of minutes late here. Is this still a good time? Yeah, uh, still a good time. How's your day been so far? Good. Um, well, that's great. Uh, I'm doing well too, thanks for asking. Anyways, I'll start off with telling you a bit about the company and the team. Then I'd like for you to tell me a bit about yourself, your projects, and we'll end off this 45 minute interview by asking you some technical questions. Yeah, sounds good. I'm a senior design engineer here at Wings, and I've been with the company for just over two years now. I mean, here at Wings, we basically create flying dinner tables. Essentially, we sell these dinner tables to restaurants and they are able to see customers about 100 feet up in the air. This is incredible for the environment because now these restaurants don't need to occupy as much land. And so we're looking to hire one mechanical engineer to help us essentially accelerate the world towards a better future in food robotics. Now, tell me about yourself. Well, it's cool to hear a little bit more about Wings. I'm a recent mechanical engineering graduate from the University of Waterloo. And over the past five years of my studies, I was able to accumulate just over two years of work experience. I started off working as a mechanical engineer at a startup in Toronto. I then took on a bigger role in my second internship, working as a manufacturing engineer at a larger company called Ecobee. I then took that knowledge and worked at another company as a product design engineer. Afterwards, I worked at a startup called Blended as a mechanical engineer. Okay, tell me more about Blended. Yeah, well, similar to Wings, this startup also happens to be in the food robotics industry. A lot of my work there involved working with product managers to turn the product requirements into engineering requirements, create a detailed design, assess design issues, and prototype pretty quickly. Okay, well, so looking at your resume and portfolio here, I see that you've done a bunch of projects. Maybe just pick your favorite and tell me a little bit about it. For sure. So one of my favorite projects is a personal project of mine that I like to call Happy. I work in this project with a few friends and the product is essentially a toilet attachment that analyzes your urine before it's flushed away to give you information that can allow you to track your health and detect diseases like diabetes or UTIs. How did you make that? I created 3D CAD models and detailed 2D engineering drawings and SOLIDWORKS for many of the parts that make up this product. I also used Arduino and several sensors for the electrical infrastructure and I fabricated it using 3D printing and laser cutting. It was overall a pretty successful project because I was able to provide dehydration levels at an accuracy of 95% so I'm pretty proud of that. Seems like you're quite passionate about this project of yours. Oh yeah, he definitely likes me. I'm definitely getting the job. There's no way you would have said that otherwise. I understand this project was just a prototype, but if you were to mass produce it at a high volume, what would you do? Huh? Okay, Tamer, think, think. What do I know about high volume? Oh, okay, I think I know what I'm gonna say. Okay, so for a high volume of parts, I would use injection molding because it can handle relatively complex geometry. Any other reasons? Yeah, well, although the process can be expensive up front, this process can end up actually being a lot cheaper if we make a large enough number of parts. All right, uh, what type of plastic would you make this out of? So ideally, I want to use a plastic that is moisture resistant and has decent impact strength. So a plastic like polypropylene would be a good choice here. What about the use of a different plastic like polycarbonate, for example? Um, do you mind if I just think about that for a second? Sure. Okay, let me try to Google something real quick. Uh, no, no, mm, no. Oh, that could work. Okay, well, although it is possible to use it, polycarbonate isn't as machinable as polypropylene. This means it'll be harder to create the shape that we want or it will cost us more. Okay, sure, let's get into the technical questions now. I'm gonna send you a link that's essentially a virtual whiteboard. So please click on it and uh, let me know if you can see what I'm showing you. Sure. Did you get it? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, oh, just got it. Okay, first question. We have a solid rod and a hollow rod. Both of them are sliding down a ramp. Which one do you think will reach the ground first if they have the same mass? This is such an easy question. I studied this exact question last night. Let me just act like this is the first time I'm hearing this. Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Well, if the rods are sliding and without air resistance, they will reach at the same time. But if they're sliding with air resistance, it is likely that the hollow reaches first as its geometry faces lower drag. Okay, well, now instead of having the same mass, let's say they have the same volume but different mass. Would that change your answer? Same volume? Okay, I don't remember studying this question before. Okay, Tamer, just relax. This rod is rotating down the hill. What equations can I use for this? F equals ma? Nah, okay, maybe I can use the torque equation? Yeah, I think that could work. Uh, do you mind if I draw on your whiteboard? Go for it. We know that 
T equals I alpha, where T is torque, I is moment of inertia, and alpha is angular acceleration. Another equation we know that defines the moment of inertia is I equals MR squared. So if we combine both equations and isolate for alpha, we get that alpha equals T over MR squared. So the rod that will reach first would be the one with greater acceleration, and according to the equation I just derived, the one with lower mass will have greater angular acceleration, and therefore that one will reach the bottom first. Okay, nice. Let's move on to the second question. Okay, I definitely got this one right. Let's go. Okay, Tamer, chill. Keep it cool. Now, as a mechanical engineer, we work a lot with different types of metals. Two of the most common ones are steel and aluminum. Could you maybe tell me a little bit about both and what the differences are between them? Okay, so aluminum tends to be more flexible than steel and more corrosion resistant. However, steel is denser and harder than aluminum, but aluminum tends to have a greater strength to weight ratio though. Okay, great. So let's say we have two pieces of metal. One is steel and one is aluminum. And we take those two pieces of metal and we stretch them. Could you maybe tell me a little bit about how the stress on these two pieces of metal would act? Um, okay, so because steel is more... Could you actually draw a diagram on the virtual whiteboard to answer this question? Diagram? I thought this was an explaining question. What should I draw? Maybe he wants me to draw a stress strain curve? Uh, okay, so I'll draw a stress strain curve to answer this question. Uh, for steel, as you strain it or stretch the metal, as you said, it will undergo elastic deformation until it reaches its yield strength. Afterwards, it will go through plastic deformation. The difference between elastic and plastic deformation is that elastic is reversible, whereas plastic deformation is irreversible. Okay, and what about aluminum? Yeah, so aluminum isn't as strong, so its curve will look something like this, where the y-axis represents the stress the metal can face, and the x-axis represents how much metal is strained or stretched. And so the end of both of these curves represents when the metal breaks after being stretched. Clearly, aluminum will break under lower stress than the steel. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left now, so let's move on to the third and final technical question. This one is just meant to give me an idea of how you think about design problems. Okay, hit me. Did I just say hit me in the interview? Who the heck has hit me in an interview? Oh my god, that's so unprofessional. Okay, it's okay. Hopefully, hopefully he didn't hear that. You have three light bulbs upstairs and three light switches downstairs. If you can only go up once to determine which switch connects to which bulb, what would you do to figure that out? Could you give me a minute to think about that? Sure. Okay, so I have three light bulbs and three light switches. Three light bulbs and three light switches. What happens when I turn on a light switch? Well, light bulb turns on. Okay, but what else happens? What else happens? Oh, well, the bulb heats up. Okay, so I have an answer to figure out which light switch belongs to which light bulb. I think what you do is you turn one on, then turn one on one minute later and leave one off. Whichever bulb is the hottest is the first, the warm one will be the second, and the one that is off would be third. Okay, great. So we only have a couple minutes left before I have to drop off. So I'll give you these last few minutes to maybe ask me some questions. Okay, well, I kind of love to know a little bit about what the next steps are in this interview process. Great question. So how the process at this company usually works is first you do an interview with me. And if I like you, which I think I do, you then move on to the second stage of interviews where you do a panel interview with five different engineers similar to this one. Someone should reach out to you to schedule those. But for now, that's about it. Uh, thanks for your time, man. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Wait. A second interview? There's more?